Don, I know it can be a popular question, but halftime speech after a pretty rough half, uh, can you share with us what you told the team? Um, I'm not a screamer, contrary to what y'all believe. I'm not a screamer. I mean, I mean, there are, you know, there are just simple things to fix what was going on. I mean, we turned the ball over. Um, we couldn't get any stops. Um, we we need to do a better job sharing the basketball. Like the ball gets stuck. I think we take bad shots, rush shots, and we're in the process of learning or relearning. Um, just taking the best shot on the floor versus taking contested shots. And then we're just in the right in the middle of uh, making that decision. And it really is um, complicating our offense. Don, you mentioned the turnovers 18 today. How much of that was due to what Georgia was doing defensively, poor ball handling, or just middle errors? I mean, a little bit of both. I mean, you, you have to credit them for you know, I knew that coming in, if they got their zone working a little bit, it, it could be problematic. I thought we, um, we, we, we did a much better job in the, in the third and fourth quarters, getting the ball to um, spots where it's, uh, it's uh, soft spots in their zone. And I thought it paid big dividends. Uh, when we got Camilla the ball, she was able to make something happen. If not, she was kicking it out. She was getting her, her own rebound. Um, and I thought we got really good effort from Chloe Kitts, um, just working through her um, in our offense. And we got piled some good looks as well. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a work in progress. Um, we got to get it together because uh, it just gets tougher and tougher as we continue down this road, down the, the end of the season and into postseason. Along that theme, this is back-to-back -back games with a bit more stress for you. Just We talked about it a few days ago, but where's the importance here for a young team to kind of learn these lessons now before March? Yeah, I mean, for, we've been fortunate that we've learned lessons through winning. We don't want to take a loss and learn a lesson. Um, I mean, the lessons are right there in front of us. We just have to do a better job of executing what needs to be executed. And, I mean, probably some, some teams are – some teams have gone through this all season long. I think for us, it's our turn. We, you know, we don't want it to be, but it's our turn to just kind of work through the next step of, of continuing to improve on on things. And we just can't take two steps back. Back. Um, we've been a team that has done it over um, the course of spreading it out, like everybody. Everybody feels important on our, our on our basketball team, and we need to keep that in the forefront. Uh, Coach, it's a little bit of a tangential question, but there was a USC student who went viral on College Game Day for holding up a sign about Pearl Moore and her A A I A W scoring record. Uh, how important is it to you to to acknowledge the greatness of women's basketball players past as players like yours and Caitlin Clark continue to grow the game? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, we we anybody that's contributed to our game in any era um, needs to be highlighted. Um, I know um, Pearl Morris, you know, is, is from South Carolina, and we we want to highlight her, but we don't want to dampen um, the contributions of a Caitlin Clark. Um, there's room for all of it. We just can't be singularly focused on just one, one person um, because, I mean, everybody's contributed. I think, I think it's Caitlin's time now. And I do think at times we get a narrow um, view of, you know, all the specialness of our, of our sport. But there's room to highlight those who are contributing in a historical way and, and those who are just hold and serve. Um, I mean, all of it, all of it matters. Uh, you were talking about Javin Nicholson on Friday and obviously she <laughs> especially a big first half today, but a little bit quieter in the second half. I guess, did you talk about that at halftime at all and what changed yeah. defensively in the second half on her? Yeah. I mean, what, what changed um, was at the end of the second quarter, we put Sakima on her. Like, we put some length on her. And I thought Sakima gave us uh, a small sample of what it looked like to, to have a little bit of height on her. Um, and then in the, in the third quarter, we put Camilla on her. I mean, we quieted her down just a little bit, um, but she was having our way with, uh, you know, Ash and Chloe. She's just 
she's she's big, she's skilled, she can shoot it, she can, you know, she can post you up. You can't move her once she gets set in her position. Um, super, super talented. Like um, she was one that I that I was afraid of because because of her soft hands, her ability to utilize her footwork and score and and position herself to where she's unguardable. She was unguardable tonight. Only eight two-point attempts in that first half, and then you almost <laughs> tripled that number in the second half. What about Georgia's matchup defense made it really tough to be able to generate those paint touches? And then what kind of goes into rectifying that in the second half and giving you know players like Camilla the ball in pretty advantageous situations? I mean, we fell for the bait. I mean, we took the bait. We took the bait. Um, all open shots aren't good shots, OK? All open rush shots aren't good shots. Um, um, I, I just felt like it took us a while to understand what they were doing, even though we, we tried to prep them over the past uh, um, two days. But when it's, when it's real and it's, when it's working, and it was working for them, um, you, tend to, you, know, you tend to take the bait. Um, yes, we were 17 of our 25 shots were from three. Um, we had to flip it. And once we did, we found ourselves getting ourselves back into the game and taking the lead and holding on for a win. Don, you're familiar with this spot, but um, on Thursday, you guys win, you clinch the regular season title, <laughs> number one seed. Is this something? And actually, I think you can clinch it tomorrow night if LSU loses. But um, is this something that you talk about? You know, when it's here, do you, you go into pregame and say, hey, we can win a title tonight? Um, no, I'm not going to mention it, but I'm sure you're going to tweet about it, Dave. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's out there. Um, maybe now that it's out there, yeah, maybe we, we talk about it. Um, we got we got a couple of opportunities to do it, so um, hopefully we can we can take care of business now. That, you know, now we know that it can be done um, on on Thursday, and it can be done at home. I like I like that. I think it goes back to our first one. We were able to win on here in Commissioner Sly, bless his soul, was able to come and, and present the trophy to us. Um, I, I think it would be an awesome feat for this group. You know, when it probably, I know people picked us second, um, and that was a generous second just from our, our past success. Um, but this team has been, has done some, some great things, and they're young, they're still figuring it out, but they're finding a way to win. And to be able to do it at such an early, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's early. It's, I don't know, four or five games remaining. Um, I'm proud of them. Um, Coach, what does it mean to you all to have college game day here and the atmosphere that helps create, especially with it being the fourth sellout of the season and everything? I think it's great. Anytime that um, the decision makers of our game decides to bring a college game day to a um, to a campus, um, I do think it's worth it. They know the crowd will be there. They know, um, and, and people may have thought that this would be a lopsided um, game, um, but in our league, nothing's guaranteed. Um, so we even gave it, gave it a good game, um, but to have the, um, Commentators, the, anal the, the the analysts that uh, um, um, that call our games, you know, I mean, it was star studded. Um, I thought our our students got here early, and they they uh, presented well for our you know for our our you know our, our arena, everybody. I mean, it's 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 kind of a cool thing that they they chose to come to to our gym. Um, again, and maybe uh, if we continue to, to have some success, they'll, they'll come back next year. But we have, we have, and Commissioner, I got to give it back to Commissioner Slive, who, um, and he doesn't get very upset, he didn't get upset a whole lot, but we were asking for a whole lot as, as women's, you know, as women's basketball coaches. And he basically told us, get back on our campuses and make it look like what we've made it look like. So. Um, kudos to Commissioner Sly for um, giving us some, some homework. Um, because of that, we pound the payments and we put, you know, we put a lot of people in the stands and 
it's, it's been like that uh, for over 10 years. So I couldn't be more proud to represent this this conference and represent a man who who moved the he moved the chains when it comes to making us the best conference in the country. Just a couple of quick ones. Um, they've been playing basketball in the SEC for a long time. You guys won your 43rd regular season game. That's a record. What does that mean to be able to have that kind of sustained excellence in a league like this overall? Um, one, I think it's really hard to do nowadays. Um, so we've been very fortunate to, to have this type of success. Um, I don't even, it's not even a record that I actually would have looked at 43 games ago, not. Um, but obviously Tennessee, right? Tennessee was, a, a, you know, the story program that gave us something to reach for unintentionally. Um, we were able to do it. And again, you know, I'm, I'm just proud of the former players and our current players to, to put together, you know, some of, some of the, the most historical stretches in this league. And this, it says something um, to be able to do that because this is a hard league. It's a hard league to stay healthy. It's a hard league to win. It's a hard league to just win at home and, and on the road. And we were able to do that. So again, super proud of the program that our, all of our players that contributed. Um, so it's a, it a great feat. You got to catch up with a couple of celebrities too. Coach Spurrier here for Coach. a while. Kelsey Plum here in the building. Did Asia call for tickets? To get her? <laughs> no, 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 no. Under Armour, Under Armour. She's Under Armour. Um, um, cool. As always, I mean, Coach Spurrier calls me all the time, text messages me all the time. Um, he is. Uh, he's been. He's watched our program for a long time. Like he's hit the road. Like he's. He's got to drive back. Um, like right now, he's driving back. But he, he stayed to, to watch us play, and um, Coach has been one that I could I could talk to about um, how to coach at South Carolina because it's not it's not a easy thing to do, you know, especially with fans wanting winners all the time, like all the time. If we drop a game, uh, the bottom will fall out, even though we've accomplished a great feat um, this season and continue from last season. So. Um, great to have great people in the stands. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Thank you all.